Tropius are Pokemon and Quetzalcoatlus were flying reptiles. Who could fly better? If you ever thought that our ability to pick up and use tools made us superior among all the creatures, you clearly have much to learn. Bird flight is insanely complex. It requires the bones, muscles and wings to be optimally adapted to allow the owner to defy gravity just to find a new way to eat, breed or migrate. If flying was an Olympic sport, it would be the hardest of them all. To give you a sense of how physically demanding it is, imagine if you could suddenly run five times faster than before, burning five times as much energy per second. Imagine a world where Usain Bolt would finish his world record sprint not in 9.58 seconds, but in 1.92 seconds. The forces on his legs and arms would be so great that they would be torn apart. His heart would pump so fast that it would have failed immediately. Birds burn five times more energy with each flight. So, how do they do it? Most of the strength that help a bird fly are in its chest. These muscles are able to stretch considerably and can resist being pulled up and down many times per second. Why doesn't the bird's heart fail? It's because they are small and their hearts beat more quickly. This relationship is known as allometry and can be summarized by this equation which can be rearranged to find empirical values of B and A. It explains why smaller creatures perceive time more sensitively, why the anatomies of bigger animals are disproportionately more complex, and why there is a limit to the size of birds. As volume decreases, surface area decreases more slowly, so a small animal radiates energy more effectively, so it needs to burn energy more quickly to compensate. This is why flight gets more energetic the smaller the flying animal. The hummingbird is the size of a young dragonfly and beats its wings an eye-watering 70 times per second. The largest birds that can fly today are only about 10 kilograms. What about in the past though? In the age of the dinosaurs, the dragons known as pterosaurs could get up to the weight of a motorcycle. Let's work up from something about half as heavy. Tropius are avian Pokemon that resemble Brachiosaurus. They are a grass flying type and live in tropical areas. They use the four leaves on their backs to fly and photosynthesize. That means they use their leafy wings to not only generate lift, but provide themselves with energy from the sun. Excess energy goes into making the dangling bananas on their neck, and so they are dubbed the fruit Pokemon. Tropius are 100 kilograms and use leaves to fly. That's like if a rugby player tried meeting the angels in heaven using nothing but paper envelopes. It might work, but they will literally die trying. Incidentally, Tropius are less aerodynamic than a rugby player, so they definitely use magic. Right? See, Tropius are not fairy or psychic type. However, they can learn moves like Solar Beam, Steel Wing and Sunny Day. How would these allow Tropius to get their squat legs off the ground? Every single mammal and every single bird 
evolved via a process of natural selection over 365 million years ago from a common ancestor with four limbs. Today, all mammals and birds have four limbs. No more, no less. Even animals that seem to have fewer still have the genetic blueprint to make all four, and you can often see it as a bone that isn't fully developed. Tropius have four legs. They cannot have another four limbs on their backs to flap their leafy wings, thank you very much. Therefore, either they use their legs to control their wings, their wings are sentient, or Tropius have mastered the art of manipulating the distribution of air pressure around their wings to make them move in ways that seem to defy the laws of physics. If their wings are sentient, maybe they would explain why they need to make their own energy photosynthetically. Tropius can use their leaves to photosynthesize and generate lift. Photosynthesis is a process normally reserved for plant life. Hence, Tropius are plant-like Pokemon. Indeed, real leaves can photosynthesize and do other things. Just like animals, they can respire as well. Why do banana leaves retain their shape so well and make for effective and affordable food platters? It's because they have a high concentration of cellulose and lignin. Lignin is a structural compound that is like a glue that makes cellulose molecules stick together. The concentration of lignin in banana leaves is about the same as the concentration in tree bark. Clearly, trees are highly robust structures capable of growing taller than buildings while being so thin that they even sway in the wind. So, how do solar beam, steel wing and sunny day come into play? Let's see. First, Tropius could synthesize a tremendous amount of energy using solar beam invigorated by using sunny day. Then, they could stiffen their wings with steel wing by drawing in more lignin to their leaf cells, making them have the structural rigidity of airplane wings. Since they use sunny day, it also makes flight easier because they can simply jump with all the energy they got from using solar beam and begin to climb higher because the rising heated air will generate all the lift they need. They could probably reach 70 miles per hour using this technique. I'll leave it to you to tell me in the comments how they can fly and attack at the same time using the same leaves. Anyway, enough with the theorizing, how about we compare Tropius with our real animal? Quetzalcoatlus was a genus of flying reptiles that went extinct along with all the other dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Many of you will remember from elementary geography that Aztec got a multicolored snake called Quetzalcoatl. Both are giant sinister feathered monsters that could easily snatch a human in its gaping mouth or beak in one fell swoop. Both are seen in movies. Both do not exist today. Wait, how does a snake fly? N never mind. Since these winged beasts are so huge, maybe they fly like airplanes. I mean, Quetzalcoatlus are so huge, but they are nothing compared to a Boeing 747. The heaviest of Quetzalcoatlus may have been 250 kilograms, which is already twice the mass of Tropius. Yet the Boeing 747 is the weight of 734 of the heaviest of Quetzalcoatlus. In fact, the animal is about the size of the smallest aircraft ever made, the Cessna 172, and three times of flight. So, it probably flew just like one of these man-made vehicles, right? Right? Wrong. <laughs> Please show me any commercial airliner which flaps its wings just like a bird. 
the aerodynamics of aircraft and birds are simply incompatible. Engineers have to make their aircraft as streamlined as possible. A flying animal can use a variety of tactics to overcome air resistance. We're not going to see planes with feathers anytime soon. So how did they fly? Pterosaurs had one very long finger that held a membranous wing in tension. This is dissimilar to birds who use feathers and bats who use their whole hand. Looking at how broad its wings are, it probably soared like an albatross, banking and flying in circles to climb higher in areas of rising heated air on the clouds called thermals. To take off, it probably jumped from cliffs to increase the airspeed traveling over it to generate lift. A running start might also suffice if the wind speed is particularly strong on that day. What role do feathers play? Why don't pterosaurs have them? Membranes, fur and feathers can all confer similar benefits while satisfying unique niches. Today. Bats are some of the most numerous mammals on Earth simply because they have evolved a completely unique survival strategy that no other mammal has. Powered flight. Huge wings are needed for a large animal. Their wings are nearly a meter across. Yet, the wings of Quetzalcoatlus may have been barely large enough for a few seconds of powered flight. Enough to compete with a chicken. Fortunately, the concentration of oxygen 68 million years ago would have been greater than what it is today, so they would have been able to use energy more efficiently. Without feathers, pterosaurs had to use the muscles in and around their membranous wings to guide the flow of air around them in a way that pertains to feathers on a bird, or fur on a mammal, or even wings on a fighter jet. Naturally, the way pterosaurs flew is highly debated, since paper-like wings are not the best material for surviving in the fossil record. It has been said that flying is constantly evolving to optimize flight. The pterosaurs survived for over 150 million years, so they clearly did something right. For stable flight, flying animals need to balance their weight with the lift generated and the drag forces due to air resistance. A small gust of wind could rip the fragile wings as they are quickly jostled about by a mixture of forces. Fortunately, just like reinforcing concrete with steel increases its strength, making it a much better structural material, reinforcing wings with stiff fibres of collagen helps the wing to resist stresses from any form of acceleration, such as banking, climbing, and breaking. That super long finger that spanned the wing also would have needed to be very resistant to bending. Clearly, it isn't enough for an animal to simply be able to flap their wings and get off the ground. The wings have to withstand bending at high speeds. The muscles and bones that connect to them have to be able to withstand the dynamic drag forces up in the air and the body needs to be able to use energy quickly enough to sustain flight. Obviously, Quetzalcoatlus and the other pterosaurs and all the creatures that once roamed and still roam the sky checked off all these necessary boxes to not only fly, but fly well, fly far and fly the next day. Tropius are quite literally the antithesis of a biomechanically engineered bird. Leaves, regardless of their type, bend easily at high speeds. Their flight muscles ought to be far away from the ends of their wings, meaning that the forces on them would be astronomical. 
okay, maybe they could use energy fast enough, especially if they use certain moves to amplify the metabolic rate. Even sloths can change the metabolic rates while fully awake. However, I wonder why they would even need to fly anyway. There's a reason no tree on earth has wings. Maybe to get closer to the sun to increase their rate of photosynthesis and neck food production? Maybe their food can only be found in the tallest of trees. Maybe they can only find mates on different islands. Or maybe, just like the colossal Quetzalcoatlus and every other life form. They simply evolved to fill in an underutilized niche. In this case, flying reptiles.